The year-end real estate data is in for the Omaha market. And while many were stuck on the sidelines in 2023 in what we're calling an affordability crisis, that year-end data is giving us cautious optimism for what's ahead. My name is Brian Carlin. I'm with Nebraska Realty. I've been selling homes for 22 years, and I'm a bit of a stats geek. So if you're a buyer or a seller that's been on the fence, let's take a look at this data and see what you can expect. We'll answer a lot of questions. What's going to happen with the interest rates? Will home prices come down? Will the supply of homes be better? Will inventory be better this year? And what's going to happen with demand? Let's hop in my bubble and take a look at that data. There were three main issues that grabbed the headlines relating to real estate last year. The first were the rising interest rates. The second was that nobody wanted to sell their home. And the third were the high costs of those homes pushed many home buyers to the sidelines and it was almost made them unaffordable. But let's look at the uh, inventory levels first. Uh, will sellers finally loosen up? Are the indications that more sellers will put their homes on the market in 2024? And that's what this first chart here shows us. While inventories remain at historic lows throughout much of the country, Omaha saw a 14% increase in homes on the market from about this same time last year. There's the numbers. And a 52% increase from the rock bottom way back in 20, December of 2021. 52% increase. That's significant although we're still below the trend uh, or the typical trend, I should say there. But this data shows us that there is a clear, clear trend uh, of slow but steady increases in inventory that we do expect to continue into 2024. Sellers are slowly coming back into the market. Home buyers should have more opportunity and more inventory to choose from come this spring. This begs the question, why is most of the country at or near historic lows in inventory in the first place? Well, this isn't a big mystery. Mortgage interest rates, of course, those pesky high interest rates. According to Redfin, over 88% of homeowners with a mortgage have an interest rate at or below 6%, to 88%. Nearly 60% have mortgages with an inch with a fixed interest rate below 4%. So this is prompting many to stay put instead of selling and buying a home at a higher rate. A phenomenon we, we are calling the lock-in effect. So and that's not only common sense just to stay put, but it also gives us some insight as to why or the reasons why we're starting to see a little bit of pickup or a positive trend in the inventory levels, okay? And that is twofold. As time goes on, more and more people are losing those locks. Here in Omaha, it was predominantly a 15 or a 30 year lock. But on a national scale, a lot of people refinanced into still five year balloon notes or 10 year or shorter term locks, and those are expiring. It's not a huge percentage, but it's enough to increase inventory levels, and that's what we're seeing. The second, and what I feel is the larger factor in all of this, is that many home buyers are now seeing 6% mortgage rates as the new four, okay? So after nearly two years of rising interest rates and steady increases by the Federal Reserve on their benchmark rates, the recent stabilization of rates through the fall has triggered feelings of a new normal, okay? While much of the same, it's, it's similar to why increasing rates push buyers and activity to the side in general, steady rates, flat rates that aren't changing also have a positive impact. And this increase in activity is an early sign of the acceptance of a new reality. 6% is the new four. There are zero expectations that we're gonna go anywhere near that. 
So people are warming up to the idea that if they do have a need to move, that it is an acceptable time to do so because the horizon doesn't look like it's gonna be all that much different. Make sense? This brings us to the buy side of things. Has the recent stabilization of the mortgage interest rate also encouraged home buying? In fact, it has. So let's sneak over to our second chart, the pending home sales, and let's look what we find here. If you notice, right here, there's nearly a 16% increase in the number of pending transactions, pending meaning they're soon to be closed, at the same in December than they were in December of last year. That's a significant a, a difference in number of transactions. Okay, nationally, that increase was around two and a half percent. All indications are pointing towards more homes on the market and more transactions in 2024. So if both supply and demand of homes are climbing together, what is happening to home sale prices? Let's take a look. Let's look over at the closed prices. You can see in our final chart here that the median price of the December 2023 home sales in Douglas and Sarpy County was up over 6% from the year before. It's now sitting around 300, while in December of 2022 was around 280,000. Mind you, this is the median, not the average. A lot of people will give you averages. Median is a much better number because by its nature, it doesn't weight the, um, the, the outliers, the ones that are terribly low and the terribly high, they're less relevant in a median equation. So median's a better indicator of true value. Okay, so if you're one of those millions of home buyers that have been priced out of the housing market in, in what we're calling that affordability crisis, well, fortunately, all indications are pointing towards continued growth, increase in values in the home sale values. There is no data to suggest that a home value is a return to what it once was, especially returning to pre-pandemic levels. The goalposts have been moved. All the data is pointing towards further price increases. The good news is those home values are expected to increase at a much slower and manageable pace than the double digit appreciation we had seen in years past. So let's wrap this all up by looking ahead. All current trends indicate we have more than enough inventory, more than enough home buyers at current mortgage rates and at current prices to keep the activity happening. Okay, the buyers are accepting current mortgage rates, sellers are accepting the rates and still putting their homes on the market at better levels, at more levels than last year. The rising inventory is slightly slightly outpacing that increase in demand. And the upward pressure on home prices has receded. This will help encourage home sale activity this spring. As for mortgage rates, I don't think the Federal Reserve is going to increase those benchmark rates as much as many people want or are reporting them to do. Some are saying four, I'm guessing it's more likely two. Wouldn't be surprised if it's three. I don't expect them to do it in the first meeting, but maybe later this spring when they meet, then they'll go. But I do want to express some cautious, I know I said cautious optimism early. If rates fall too fast, too quick, that is going to create a lot of demand. And I think the increase in inventory could be outpaced by that sudden increase in demand, which then means we could very well be back to bidding wars this summer if that demand overtakes the pace of the inventory supply. So while cheaper mortgage rates make payment affordability 
improved. I'm also expecting competition to pick up through the summer, but we don't want those rates to go too far, too fast down. It'll throw those rates right back up into double digit appreciation. But don't forget this. This is also an election year, okay? I've been doing this so long, I've been through this enough to understand election years tend to push activity to the side. Any major economic or political or cultural conflict or uncertainty makes buyers and sellers put things on pause. That is what we can expect from this divisive political stuff that's going to happen come the fall. So I think activity will pick up early in the spring, continue through the summer, but but also slow down as soon as all those all the the, the um, voting ads and all that stuff happens in the fall. So my suggestion to people is take advantage of slightly decreased interest rates. Go find a home. You can negotiate a little bit more now. But as buyer activity picks up this summer, you're going to lose negotiating leverage with sellers. My name is Brian Carlin. If this is all news to you, I want you to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And the following videos will also look at the data and help show you further trends as we go into 2024 so you can plan ahead. Thank you.